The AXP 90X53 is a low profile CPU cooler from Thermalrite. Now, is this the best choice for your next home theater PC or ITX build? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. So if you end up liking what I'm doing here, could you please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel? It helps out a lot. Now to have full disclosure, Thermalrite did send me over this cooler so that I could review it. But as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. And as normal, I will have timestamps in the description so you can jump to whatever interests you. But as always, I do recommend you watch the whole review. There are three different models of the AXP90. There is the X53, which is what I have here today. There is the X47 and the X36. Each model has multiple color options. There are four color options in total. There is the bare aluminum with gray fan. There is the white model, there is the black model, and there is the full copper model. But not all models have all the color options. The pricing for the X53 is 40 US dollars for the bare aluminum model and 45 US dollars for the black model. These prices are taken from Amazon at time of filming. And as you can see, there is also a coupon. Not sure how long this coupon is valid for. So depending on when you're actually watching this, you might be able to save a few bucks. Okay, let's see what comes in the box. There is the heatsink and fan, the AMD mounting brackets, a tube of thermal compound, the mounting instructions, and what I can only guess is a warranty card. Since I can't read Cantonese or Mandarin, I really have no idea what this is. Looking at the fan first, it has a single 90 millimeter fan, which clips onto the top of the heatsink with two metal clips. This fan is a four pin PWM fan. There are rubber pads on each corner of the fan. This should help a little with vibrations. Now it did say on the box that this fan has a max rated RPM of 1700. I will confirm this later on in the video when I do the PWM range testing. Taking a look at the heatsink, there are four six millimeter heat pipes. These heat pipes are not direct contact. This cold plate is called up as copper with a nickel plating. The black coating on the heatsink does look well coated. I'm not seeing any missing spots. I'll show some B-roll of the heatsink and fan so you can get a better look. The dimensions of this cooler with the fan attached is 94.5 millimeters deep by 95 millimeters wide by 53 millimeters high. So to put this into some context, this is shorter than the Wraith Spire cooler. Okay, the AXP90 out of the box is compatible with the more current mainstream Intel sockets. There is also a mounting kit for the LGA1700, but it is sold separately. For AMD compatibility, this cooler is compatible with AM4, which is all you need. Moving on to installing the CPU cooler, I will be demonstrating this on an AM4 motherboard. Now, as always, before you start, make sure you have a flat and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat but in a pinch, you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You will also need a Phillips II screwdriver. The installation between Intel and AMD should be pretty similar. The main differences being which mounting bars you use and which way the backplate is facing. Okay, to start, we'll need to remove the stock backplate. Once the stock backplate is removed, you'll need to confirm which mounting bars you'll need for your socket. If you do need to remove the mounting bars, simply unscrew the four screws fastening the mounting bars to the cold plate. You will need to remove the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate to do this. Then install the new mounting bars to the cold plate using the same four screws. Make sure the mounting bars are facing the correct way. Once the mounting bars are fastened, you can screw in the standoffs into the mounting bars. Now we'll need to clean off the CPU's IHS and the bottom of the cold plate with some isopropylene alcohol. Once the CPU's IHS and the cold plate are clean, set the cooler to the side and apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now you'll want to stand the motherboard up using one hand and pick up the cooler with the other, making sure not to touch the cold plate. Place the cooler cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screws on the mounting bars 
to the screw holes on the motherboard. Now lean the motherboard to rest on the CPU cooler. Now place the back plate over the standoffs, then hand thread the nuts, one on each standoff. You should see the name of the socket you're using on the back plate once it's installed. Now this is where things get a little screwy, I guess pun intended. There is no indication of how much you should tighten the nuts. I used my digital caliper and tightened the nuts till there was four millimeters of threading through the nut. This seemed to work well enough for AM4, but Intel will likely be different. Before getting into the temperature testing, I'll quickly go over the fan's PWM range. So with the fan running at 100% PWM, the RPM is around 3000, so well above the rated 2700, and this had a DBA of 39.2. Now that is taken from 20 inches away in an open air test bench. Then dropping the PWM all the way down, this fan had an RPM of around 570, which had a DBA of 32. Now again, that is taken from 20 inches away on an open air test bench. Now the noise floor of my room is 32, so it is at or below my noise floor. So this fan does give plenty of range to play with when you're setting a fan curve. Okay, before I go over the results of the temperature testing, if you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of the CPU cooler testing. I'll put a card above and I'll also link it in the description. Now specifically for this cooler, I did create a new test and that is a 76 watt test. I also tested the first generation Wraith Stealth and Wraith Spire coolers. So this is the Wraith Spire cooler that has the copper slug. And I did this so there would be something to compare to. So the X53 in the 35 dBA noise equalized 67 watt test had a temperature of 68.5 Celsius which has it 2.5 Celsius cooler than the Wraith Spire. When letting the fan run at full speed, the average CPU temperature was 67.2 Celsius and the cooler had a DBA of 39.2. So there is a pretty large noise difference for not much of a temperature difference. In the 87 watt testing, it performed well for its size. And when looking at these charts, you do need to keep in mind, this cooler is meant for an ITX case meaning it is a much smaller cooler than something like the Hyper 212 Evo. In the noise equalized test, it had a temperature of 85.4 C, which has it second from the bottom because the Wraith Spire cooler wasn't able to pass this test. Then at full speed, the X53 had a temperature of 82.9 C. So it's again second from the bottom, but this time the Wraith Spire was able to finish the test. Okay, so what do I think of the AXP90X53? Now this is a bit of a tough one since I've only tested the AMD stock coolers. I do like the look of this cooler and I do like the naming of this cooler. There's a certain logic to it. 90 is for the size of the fan and X53 means that it's 53 millimeters high. So based off this, you know that the X47 is 47 millimeters high and the X 36 is 36 millimeters high. It's nice that it actually makes sense, but, and this is a pretty big but, the mounting is a bit sus because it is definitely possible to break something, likely your motherboard, if it's tightened too much. So that's really not cool. Now I believe Thermalright designed it this way so that it would work with different sockets relatively easily. So I do kind of get where they're going, but you do need some way to stop people from over tightening it because it is possible that someone could break their motherboard. Okay, so now you understand not to over tighten the nuts and you're looking to replace your AMD Stealth cooler or an Intel stock cooler with the X53. And this definitely will drop your CPU temperature by a fair bit. So making this switch would likely be worth the money. But if you're using an AMD Spire cooler or at least the spire cooler that has the copper slug in it. I'm not sure if 40 USD for that temperature difference is really worth it because I don't think you'll likely get a better overclock with this cooler relative to the right spire. It will just likely have a better temperature at the same overclock, if that makes sense. Now, if someone were to buy this, I would understand why because it is cooler, and if you are wanting to run your CPU at that frequency, this will do it cooler than the Wraith Spire. 
Now I wasn't entirely good with just leaving with the two stock coolers. So I did decide to at least go and look at some other ITX coolers. I found the IS30 from ID Cooling, but the IS30 is smaller than the X53. So this would have the temperatures likely be higher and it is also slightly more expensive. I also found the NHL 9A from Noctua. Now the L9A is socket specific, so you won't be able to actually switch this over to your, well, you won't likely be able to switch it over to your next build. And if you do like building ITX, this is a fairly big deal. So based off all the coolers I showed here, the AXP 90 X53 is looking like a pretty decent choice as long as you understand not to over tighten the mounting hardware. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. I also have an HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. The link is down in the description. Uh, you can maybe check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched right now. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.